now for some reason we feel Hi, like I'd like to welcome everybody here to the uh, Mock Trial Coaches Conference. I'm very glad that you could make it. My name is Ellen Hennick, and I am the chair of the Mock Trial Task Force, which I'm going to talk to you about a little bit later, because I'm actually actively looking for people who might want to be on that task force, and I've got some chores in mind, so we'll talk about that later. What I'd like to, to explain to you real briefly is that we are going to be stopping for a short time in between each session. The reason for that is that we are recording the sessions and the technology requires it. So for all of you who are teachers, you know, you're accustomed to this, the computer doesn't work for a minute or two, you'd have to take a pause, it's that kind of thing. The first people that we have here who are going to help us out are Janelle Anderson, who is from Lodi High School. She's been coaching mock trial for quite some time. And we've got attorney Kevin Lonergan from Herling Clark Law Firm in Appleton. He also has been involved with mock trial for quite a long time in just about every capacity I can think of. You've judged, you've coached. I can't remember if you've helped write the problem, but I think you did at one point. I'm not not that. Not that, okay, maybe not that. But we're but on the advisory committee too. I was gonna say, you've been on the advisory committee because I know because I've seen you there for a long time. They're gonna talk about how to develop and support a team. I know that they're going to go ahead and take questions towards the end. So if you could hold your questions till then, that would probably be helpful, especially since we're gonna be in the situation because we're recording of having to get those questions on tape as well as the answers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I am Janelle Anderson, and thank you very much for coming. It's great to see um, so many people here this year. And every year it seems like more and more people are able to come, and I think it's a really great thing for the statewide program to have us all have an opportunity to get together and talk about things. And um, I know that a lot of you out there have experience coaching mock trial. Um, some of the people who may be watching online also have quite a bit of experience coaching mock trial, and I look forward to learning as much from you, hopefully, as you can glean from me. Um, and uh, I certainly am coming at mock trial and, and this whole conversation from a perspective that is my own and my personal one. So um, I hope in the question and answer, and I know Kevin feels the same way, that uh, we can get an opportunity to hear what your thoughts are on all the things that we're talking about. Um, and uh, if you have questions, of course, please raise them. So um, I'll tell you briefly just a little bit about myself to give you um, some understanding of uh, why I coach the way that I do and why I develop teams in the capacity or in, in the way that I do. Um, so I'm Janelle Anderson, I coach at Lodi High School and Lodi is um, a rural community about 20 minutes, 25 minutes north of Madison. Um, mock trial did not exist in Lodi when I came to Lodi, but I had participated in mock trial all four years of high school at Berlin High School, if any of you are familiar with Berlin, BHS, under uh, Gary Kenoki, who was a fantastic coach uh, who coached mock trial um, from its inception until just a few years ago, um, and learned an enormous amount from him and found that it was something that I really enjoyed and was passionate about. Um, and so when I became a teacher, I knew that that was something I wanted to do. So I have been coaching mock trial for, I think, I was actually stumped a few minutes ago about how many years I've actually been coaching. I think it's seven years that I've been coaching, but <laughs> I'm sort of embarrassed to say I don't quite remember um, how many years. So I think the first thing that I'll do is, well, I'm coming at this as a teacher coach's perspective, and Kevin is going to share with you his perspective as an attorney coach. And there are um, some uniqueness uh, or unique things about um, each perspective. Um, but I think one thing that both of us will very likely agree on is that something that helps build a team and really any program is a coach that really has a passion for it and really loves it and finds joy in it and you sort of bring that to your students. So that's something that, because of my experience um, uh, at Berlin High School, uh, I was really able and am able to bring to mock trial. So I really, I started the team um, in a year when I had students who I knew were interested. We, in my classroom, I, I'm a social studies teacher, and um, I had an opportunity to be teaching the My Lai Massacre, which um, occurred during the Vietnam War, for those of you who are familiar. And I got a hold of some materials that were a mock trial 
like a, a mock trial of the, the participants involved. And I found that the students were really into it. And um, I asked them, if, if you really liked this, would you be interested in doing this program that's called mock trial? And so I kind of gathered a few students up. And the first year that I started, we really just did it as an inter-school scrimmage. And once um, the school board was on, on board and we had interest, um, we took off from there. Um, over the years, one of the things that I have worked at, and I'm sure most of you uh, have to work at to a certain extent, is recruitment. Um, so one of the things I wanted to share with you guys today uh, are some of the things that I do to recruit students and some of my sort of philosophies or, or principles of coaching. Um, and one of the things that I have done over the past several years is I have used advertisements starting at the very beginning of the school year. In the last few years, it's really become clear to me that I have a lot of students in my school who are interested in mock trial, but who don't really know what it is. Um, and it's also really hard to sum up in a soundbite. You know, we have a fake case, and you are lawyers and witnesses, and you act out the case. And that gives them a little window, but then you start talking to them about things like direct examinations and cross examinations and you know objections, and it gets it gets kind of complicated. So I have found that it's really helpful if way before the the materials come out, if I have information sessions. So I often will pl uh, plan information sessions because I'm at the high school. I you know, have that uh, luxury. And I invite students to come over a period of, of days. And I um, will use also signs that I post throughout the school. And this is um, the one, this uh, image that you're seeing projected up on the screen of uh, Uncle Sam there is one of the signs that I've posted around our school at various times. And my coach, my coach friends and I, the, the people who coach um, at Lodi with me, um, have gotten into sort of making some kind of silly ones, which I can share with you. So Uncle Sam is really just one of the first ones, but we post them in the bathrooms, we post them in the halls, um, kind of anywhere we think that kids will actually uh, be able to see them. So I thought that I would just share with you guys a couple of um, our, our kind of humorous trying to get at the kids. I think it went off the screen a little bit. So we try to just get them asking questions at the beginning of the year, um, thinking about especially this one that says, do you like to argue? Do you think you're always right? Sometimes you have to be careful which kids you'll recruit with those questions. Um, so if you answered yes, you may be interested in mock trial. So kind of, again, just getting kids talking about it and asking questions. Um, and also using pictures from the previous season. That's what I did this year with my um, students, not this poster, but with, um, with some other students, a picture that I had of them posted around. And really just kind of getting kids talking to each other about mock trial. Yeah, so <laughs> I thought that one was funny. Um, and we, we have a, a hockey program, too, that we kind of compete with a little bit for some, of, for some of our students. So that was kind of our little, like, you know, wink, wink to some of those people who might have been considering going out for hockey. But the hockey coaches didn't seem to mind too much. Um, this is another one that I've used in the past. And uh, that's actually a 19th century Supreme Court justice. The kids got extra credit if they could find out his name at the meeting. So, so anyway, these are some of the, um, the, the things that I have done to recruit kids. And this is all preseason. This is stuff that I do before the season starts. Um, and I also have out in front of my door, I have a, a pocket that says mock trial information on it. And inside um, that pocket, is um, a, uh, a flyer that I put in that has like the dates for mock trial. It has the um, uh, basic information, especially the, oops, I'm trying to go back to that first screen there. There we go. Um, that has some basic information about uh, like regionals. Obviously regionals is an important date for mock trial, um, as well as just how practices work and so on and so forth. So um, once I have, my ads out and I'm doing those things. Another thing that I do is I do um, in-class recruitment and um, colleague recruitment. So I ask my colleagues, what students do you think would be uh, good for mock trial? And over the years, I there's lots of kids who are good at mock trial, but um, it helps if they are students who feel comfortable speaking in front of groups. Um, it helps if they are students who have a little zip to their personality and um, are 
ready to kind of be a little feisty. That's that's always helpful. But you know, it's it's you can't always tell what a student's going to be like in mock trial just by meeting them. Some of my um, best mock trial participants have been very quiet students that I might not have um, expected to actually really shine, who really showed me um, how incredibly talented they were. So um, we have um, a, a plan in Lodi. I have, um, I recently just about three years ago was able to get an assistant coach that coaches with me as well. Um, she's a, a teacher coach and she's actually uh, an elementary school teacher. And I was really surprised when she applied for the position. And because Lodi is so small, I knew her quite well. And she called me and she said, you know, I, I know it's sort of strange that I'm applying for this, but do you think that I could do this? And I said, absolutely, you could do it. And she has been incredible. Having that sort of other perspective, she doesn't, she's known the kids, uh, many of them when they were little. Um, and so that has been a really positive thing too. So looking for coaching help outside of the high school building can be um, really positive. We also have, of course, attorney coaches who work with us and come in um, on occasion, but I'll leave some of that conversation um, to Kevin. We have a philosophy in Lodi um, that we don't cut. So we are a no cut program. So I always tell the kids, no matter who you are, no matter what your abilities or disabilities may be, um, we will find a place for you on one of our teams. So we've had students um, who are wheelchair bound. We've had students with um, autism. Uh, we've had, uh, you know, students who were um, English as a second language speakers. One of the areas or, or uh, groups of kids that I think sometimes coaches may not ask, but who really can become excellent participants in mock trial are foreign exchange students. Um, so that's another area where we have really um, kind of been surprised and, and had some of our, our most interesting participants as um, foreign exchange students. Um, I also rank my teams. I know that a lot of schools, uh, there maybe not a lot, but there are schools and, and coaches that have philo the philosophy that if you have, you know, 12 kids, that you divide all 12 parts up between those 12 kids because course that's the uh, maximum number of kids that you can have and that's just not my coaching philosophy I think if I had 12 kids that were capable of competing sort of at the top of my group that might be a consideration but I I tend to think that having kids do more than one part and having to see the case both ways makes them um, more flexible thinkers and it makes them more uh, have have a much deeper understanding of the case but I know my good friend Katie Ashley, who coaches in DeForest, has a different philosophy or who has had a different philosophy in the past. And it's, you know, she's got great teams too. So that's just the way um, that I choose to do it. And we actually rank um, varsity, junior varsity. And then we have a third team that hasn't really been able to compete in the past. This year we're really excited that they'll be able to compete at regionals. Um, and we call them Super JV or, you know, the freshman squad, depending on what they, what they want. So, um, Let's see, um, so practices, we have practice after school. I was just speaking with a, a coach from another school who was saying that a lot of you probably have um, your kids practicing during the day, like during the lunch hour. Um, maybe some of you, how many people out there have mock trial as a class? Does anybody have it as a class? Okay. And I think there's pros and cons to that, to having it as a class. I know Baraboo um, for a very long time had mock trial um, and had it as a class. Um, I used to coach academic decathlon before I was a mock trial coach, and that was a class in our school. And I found that academic decathlon, one of the struggles of having it as a class was that um, when it's tied to a grade, sometimes you're getting the work kids will do for the grade as opposed to what they'll do for an, like a 